doctor said her daughter had three months to live so she created the cure for an incurable disease one of the worst things that can happen to a parent is learning one of their children has an incurable deadly disease it's a fate no one deserves as Martine Rothblatt tragically learned her daughter had a condition that would slowly kill her Martine drawing on every ounce of her immense wealth and creative mind took an active role in trying to save her daughter's life before we begin make sure to smash that like button subscribe to our channel and click the notification bell for more amazing videos Martine Rothblatt is a self-made female millionaire she founded a company that eventually became Sirius XM as well as several others before this venture she was a lawyer who specialized in space law back in the 1990s she'd taken serious public and done quite well for herself she considered retiring but before she could her daughter Genesis was diagnosed with pulmonary arterial hypertension a fatal condition at that time with this disease the arteries that carry blood from your heart to your lungs shrink making the heart work harder to pump blood to the lungs eventually they can give out from the strain of the extra effort there were a few options for treatment but medication needed to be continuously pumped using a special portable device which is stressful and inconvenient for the patient Martine was devastated for Genesis but her wife pointed out that they'd weathered hard times before Today, Martine and her partner, Bina, have been together for three decades. They remained a couple through Martine's transition and had four children together. They've led an exciting life, and Bina was a constant source of inspiration. She pushed Martine to save their little girl. I felt like my only purpose in life now was not to help move to the stars with satellites and stuff like that. It was to save Genesis. So I just stopped everything I was doing, Martine said. Genesis would faint continually when she was a preteen spending her life in the hospital Martine read journals and textbooks trying to find anything that might save Genesis Her goal was to find something that could be turned into a pill that would be easy for patients to take She put three million dollars into creating a research organization United Therapeutics for pulmonary arterial hypertension during her research She identified a molecule that looked promising for Genesis United Therapies bought the drug from the pharmaceutical company GlaxoSmithKline. Her company would go public a few years later in 1999. And in 2009, they received FDA approval for their drug, Orinitram. Martine Rowe spelled backwards. After achieving this remarkable milestone, United Therapeutics began selling several pulmonary hypertension medicines. But would it work for Genesis? Amazingly, the little girl pulled through. Martine and Bina were incredibly grateful that their family renewed their sense of hope But they also saw this issue was bigger than just their little unit They could change the world thanks to broader distribution of the drug There's tens of thousands of people living a healthy happy life with pulmonary hypertension Martine said best of all my own daughter Genesis is now 30 years old works at United Therapeutics and is a happy healthy young lady Besides helping save her daughter, Martine's dedication to this cause made her an even wealthier woman. Her company is valued at $4 billion, and she made $31.6 million in 2014. She was the second highest paid female CEO that year. Martine has helped implement some altruistic policies at her company. If patients can't afford the medicine, she provides it for free. It hasn't stopped us from being a successful pharmaceutical company, she said. I think actually doing the right thing always helps you do the best thing besides being a space lawyer and founding a few companies Martine has many other interesting pursuits that shape her life she calls herself a technologist a person who brings new technologies into being in that vein United Therapeutics next task is the cross species organ transplants something that's been a fixture in many sci-fi series including Margaret Atwood's Mad Adam trilogy I always try to convert a moonshot into an earth shot Martine said in a Forbes interview the moonshot is to have an unlimited supply of transplantable organs the company started their research with pig organs in 2002 United Therapeutics gained a new focus treating acute respiratory distress syndrome which is linked to COVID-19 they put two drugs in development with additional research ongoing outside of that field she recently published a manifesto virtually human this is around the concept of cyberhumans 
like organic clones, except these contain your thoughts and memories. Martine focused on their potential rights and freedoms. Martine started the Terrasem movement, a new religion that combines Judaism, yoga, and believing in the power of technology. We feel like Martine spent a lot of time reading Philip K. Dick and Octavia Butler. The figurehead of Terrasem is a floating head, Bina 48, who was created to resemble Martine's wife, Bina. Truly amazing. And while not every parent is a technological genius, many others shared Rothblatt's drive to do anything for their offspring. Glenn and Kara O'Neill were living a happy life with their two children in Columbia, South Carolina, until one day they received terrible news. Their four-year-old daughter, Eliza O'Neill, developed a rare disease that doctors didn't have a cure for. Eliza was much like any other child, running around and playing with friends. Her parents enjoyed watching her grow as life seemed to be on a steady course. Eliza also had a passion for the outdoors, and it often seemed like she wanted to spend more time in nature than inside her home. However, as time went on, Eliza began showing some unusual signs. She was talking less and less, and certain things she used to remember now suddenly seemed to slip her mind. Her mother, Kara, concerned for her daughter's mental well-being, brought her to the doctors to have screenings done. After performing some tests, the doctor came back with devastating information. Eliza was diagnosed with San Filippo syndrome, a rare degenerative genetic disease that causes irreversible brain damage and eventually death. Glenn and Kara O'Neill were crushed. San Filippo syndrome is nearly identical to Alzheimer's. In fact, it's also known as childhood Alzheimer's. These sort of degenerative brain problems usually occur in the elderly. But San Filippo tragically affects the young. Both of Eliza's parents knew exactly what their daughter was facing. It wasn't going to be long before she completely stopped talking and singing and doing all the things children do as they grow. Eliza's brother spent as much time as he could with his sister after the diagnosis. The two siblings were close before, but her brother now went far out of his way to show love and affection for his sister, who desperately needed it. Kara and Glenn heard about a new gene therapy trial that potentially could stabilize Eliza. However, if their daughter came down with any kind of virus, it would have derailed her chances of being accepted into the trial, so the family took drastic measures. They isolated themselves in their home for a total of 726 days to ensure Eliza wasn't exposed to any kind of outside illness. It was extreme, but the love they had for their daughter made every day indoors worth it. But would it save her? During the almost two years Eliza spent inside, she received constant attention to keep her mind active. Even though San Filippo syndrome was slowly deteriorating her brain, her family wanted her to stay as alert as possible, hoping it might stave off the symptoms. Kara and Glenn started a Facebook page for their daughter, in hopes it would spread the word about the disease so people all over were aware of the symptoms. So many people showed their support for little Eliza. The O'Neill family also spent nearly all of their time raising enough money for the clinical trial. Gene therapy is expensive, and because the trial was in its earliest stages, they needed a large sum of money if Eliza was to be considered. They raised the money any way they could. Much of it was online through social media pages, but they even did things like sell lemonade to help. They were more than determined to hit their number. Eliza's life depended on it. Finally, after two years of fundraising and ensuring Eliza stayed healthy, it was time to find out if the O'Neill's daughter would be accepted into the clinical trial. Kara and Glenn waited for the doctor's phone call in the car and prayed he was going to give them positive news. Miraculously, Eliza was accepted. Her parents couldn't believe their luck. After all the time spent fundraising and waiting, their daughter finally had a fair chance at survival. Not long after Kara and Glenn received the phone call, Eliza went through the one-time clinical trial in Columbus, Ohio. The family was able to end their isolation, and they were excited to see if Eliza would make progress. Since the one-time trial, Eliza's parents have been keeping her active, and they've seen a noticeable improvement. She's not quite able to speak, but her eyes light up when she hears music, and she still loves to spend her time outdoors. The O'Neill family still raises money through their Cure San Filippo Foundation, so doctors can continue their research and hopefully bring about more clinical trials. They know that, even with their struggles, there are others in a less fortunate place.